Welcome back, builders and engineers, to another episode of our Minecraft Civil Engineering series. Today, we're hitting the roads. Literally. We'll be focusing on the design and construction of roads and pathways within your Minecraft world. Whether you're planning a bustling city or a quiet village path, the principles of road design are key to creating functional and visually appealing networks. So let's get started. In this episode, we are going to cover four main aspects. Alignment, cross-section, pavement materials, and traffic flow. First up is the alignment. Alignment refers to the path that a road or a pathway follows, and it's crucial for both aesthetics and functionality. In the real world, road alignment is carefully planned to minimize sharp turns, steep slopes, and to follow the natural contours where possible. In the real world, road alignment is carefully planned through a combination of surveys and maps and computer modeling, Engineers and urban planners often work together to design roads that minimize sharp turns, steep slopes, and other obstacles that could disrupt the smooth flow of traffic. The goal is to create routes that are not only efficient, but also safe and comfortable for drivers and pedestrians. Imagine a road with a sharp, sudden turn or steep inclines. In the real world, such a road would be challenging to navigate, potentially dangerous, and could lead to the increased wear and tear on your vehicle. And the same principles do apply relatively in Minecraft. Although our roads may not see real traffic, designing them with the intent uh, and, and alignment in mind creates a more realistic and visually appealing world. When designing roads in Minecraft, start by mapping out the intended path using markers like wool or blocks or torches or, in this case, in concrete. This will help you visualize the road's trajectory and allows you to make the adjustments, the final adjustments, the fine tuning before you begin actual construction. Consider how your road will interact with the natural terrain. Try to follow natural contours of the land to reduce the need for extensive grading or leveling. Some of the road alignments you can consider are straight roads, curved roads, or even switchback roads. And to clarify on those, straight roads are ideal for urban areas with a grid-like pattern Straight roads provide clear direct routes between destinations. They're easy to build and efficient for movement, but can also sometimes feel like rigid or unnatural in more rural or mountainous areas. Curved roads, on the other hand, follow the natural contours of the landscape, creating a more organic and aesthetically pleasing design. These roads are perfect for rural settings, or villages, or when you want to add a touch of realism to your world. Curved roads can also be more engaging for a player as they reveal scenery along the route. And the last one that I mentioned was a switchback. Now these roads are commonly used in steep terrain to create a more manageable slope. Instead of building a road straight up this hill, kind of where this yellow concrete is, which can be too steep and difficult to traverse, zigzagging roads will allow you to navigate the elevation gradually making an ascent or descent smoother and more controlled. Now that's really rough but you do get the idea. This road now gradually increases as a switchback key the name there uh, and then continues the same gradual incline up in this direction coming to the same point adding a more scenic route than the yellow line but also making it smoother in transition now remember the alignment of your road is just more than a pathway from point a to point b it's about integrating your roads seamlessly into the landscape enhancing the overall experience moving throughout your minecraft world a well-aligned road not only improves the functionality but it also improves the visual appeal and immersion of your builds. Next, let's talk about a road's cross-section. The cross-section of a road is essentially the vertical slice through the road, revealing the different layers and components that make up the structure. This might sound technical, but understanding the cross-section is key to building roads that are both durable and realistic. In real-world engineering, a road's cross-section is meticulously designed to meet several important criterion. It must be able to handle the loads it will bear, provide proper drainage to prevent water accumulation, and ensure the safety and comfort for all users, whether those are vehicles and again, pedestrians. Each layer in a cross section serves a specific purpose, from providing structural support to managing water flow. So let's go ahead and break that down. Typically a road cross section, as seen behind me, one here and one above up there, consists of several layers, each contributing to the road's overall performance. Again, using this example behind me of a rough asphalt road cross-section, the layers to be considered are 
the subgrade. This is the foundation layer made up of the compacted soil or gravel. In the real world, the subgrade must be stable and well prepared to support the layers above it. A poorly constructed subgrade can lead to row failure, causing cracks and ruts and other issues over time. Like those pesky potholes we all know and hate. Ugh. In Minecraft, while we don't have to worry about the soil stability in the same way, it's still important to start with a solid base. This might even mean just leveling the ground or filling in the low areas before laying down your road. The next layer is the base layer. Above the subgrade is the base layer, usually composed of crushed stone or gravel. This provides additional structural support and helps distribute the load of traffic evenly across the subgrade. Lastly, there is the pavement or the surface layer. The topmost layer is the pavement, which directly interacts with traffic. This layer needs to be durable and smooth to ensure safe and comfortable travel. In real world roads, this might be asphalt or concrete. In Minecraft, we can use the same variations of blocks in order to achieve the overall look or the aesthetic of the build we desire. Now there is more information that we can get into with these cross sections, but for some just surface level attention without going too much into detail. The bottom cross section here is a typical urban area road. Now I did try to create a crowned effect because all roads have a high point in the center so that water flows in both directions towards the edges. And you may notice these curvy things on the sides of your roads that when you accidentally run into them, they shake up all the contents of your car. These are to help guide water. So typically the road falls at roughly on average a 2% slope from the center to the, oh goodness, from the center uh, to the gutter. And then the water runs, you know, either in that direction or in that direction where it is ca captured in some sort of inlet device. And then outside of your curb, you also have your sidewalk, which is a little higher than your road, though it may not seem like it in the real world. 2% is, it's honestly not that much. Now, the other example I have above is the same asphalt road, but in a rural setting. You may notice this on highways and other rural streets, but in this example, the road does grade in the same, same fashion from a high point in the middle to the low point on the outer edges. But the difference in this one is it eventually just drains into a ditch or off onto the shoulder of the road. So next time you're out driving around, check out what type of roadway you're on. Do you have curb and gutter or is all the water just sheet flowing off into a local ditch? Now that we understand alignment and cross sections, it is time to jump in to the pavement materials themselves. Pavement materials play a significant role in both the functionality and the aesthetics of your roads. The choice of material is not only on how you want your road to look, but also how it's going to perform over time. In the real world, materials like asphalt or concrete and even raw stone are selected based on several key factors, including durability, cost, and the intended use of the road. Let's dive deeper into some of these considerations. When engineers and urban planners design roads, they carefully choose the paved material to match the specific needs of the project. These selected materials must withstand the expected traffic load, endure various weather conditions, and provide a safe, smooth surface for vehicles and pedestrians. In the real world, asphalt is probably one of the most common used surface materials for a road surface. It's flexible, relatively inexpensive, and can handle a lot of stress of heavy traffic. Asphalt is especially favored for highways and urban roads because it provides a smooth, quiet ride and can be quickly repaired if damaged. In contrast to that, concrete is often used for roads that require greater durability and strength, such as highways or airport runways and industrial areas. Concrete is typically far more expensive and rigid, but it lasts way longer and can support heavier load loads without deforming. And then you have the combination of the two. Sometimes you will see an asphalt road that was previously concrete, and all they do is strip off a, about two inches off the top. It's called a mill and overlay. And then they come back and they add in an asphalt surface on top of the concrete. That kind of marries the two different worlds together. You have the structural integrity of the concrete, but then you also have the smooth and easily repairable surface of the asphalt. In Minecraft, we don't have to worry about the real world traffic or weather conditions. So our choice of pavement materials is more or less a, an impact of function and aesthetics. So here's a look at some common options. And these are just options and my personal preferences. For a concrete road, concrete powder or concrete itself creates a nice great overall material for paved roads 
or more urban and fortified areas. It looks durable and clean and gives your roads a polished, organized appearance. Uh, this material is perfect for roads and cities and areas where you want a solid, reliable surface. Options like gravel or dirt blocks is a more rustic choice. Ideal for rural areas, a village pass, or connecting to the outpost. It's also easy to obtain and gives the road a rough, natural look. Gravel paths in Minecraft also generate naturally in villages, making it a consistent choice if you're expanding connecting to existing roads. I also dabbled in some of the light gray concrete powder. I think this helps add a gradient or a just a change in texture when creating gravel roads. Additionally, with the dirt roads, it is sometimes fun to come in here and add in some of the road pathworks, some coarse dirt, and even some of the rooted dirt. This gives it a few more texture options. And last but certainly not least, the terracottas actually are a great representation of asphalt roadworks. These blocks offer a sleek, kind of modern look, making them ideal for high-end areas like modern cities or wealthy districts. They're clean and have a refined texture that can elevate the design of your roads, giving them the sense of importance and luxury. Now, don't be afraid to mix and match. Mix your materials. For example, using a concrete for your main roads and then for all of your side roads or residential streets using asphalt can often be a fun combination that adds character to your builds. Finally, we have made it to the last section of today's episode, section number four, traffic flow. Whether you're managing players, villagers, or just minecarts in Minecraft, designing roads and pathways with smooth traffic flow in mind is crucial. Traffic flow is all about how people and vehicles move through a space, and in both the real world and Minecraft, good design can make the difference between a bustling, efficient network and a chaotic, congested mess. Now, in the real world, urban planning, traffic flow is analyzed to reduce congestion, ensure safety, and improve accessibility. Planners often study how vehicles, pedestrians, and even cyclists navigate through a city's streets, highways, and intersections. This goal is to create a system where traffic moves efficiently and safely, reducing the chance of accidents and bottlenecks. In Minecraft, while we don't have to deal with real cars, traffics, or bicyclists, traffic flow is still an important consideration, especially if you're building a busy town, a large base, or a transportation network involving your minecarts. If your roads or pathways are too narrow, convoluted, or poorly planned, players, villagers, and entities like animals or minecarts can become bottlenecked, slowing down the movement and creating frustrating experiences. So let's break this down to a couple components. Width of roads and paths. The width of your road or pathways significantly impacts traffic flow. In the real world, wider roads often allow for more lanes of traffic, accommodating more vehicles and reducing congestion. Similarly, in Minecraft, wider roads can prevent for crowding and allow multiple entities to move side by side without bumping into each other. For example, in a busy village, a wide main street enables players, villagers, and animals to move around freely. While these narrower alleyways can serve as shortcuts for scenic paths, but may be too congested if too many entities try to squeeze through. Our next component is intersections and crossroads. Intersections are critical points where traffic flow needs to be managed carefully. In urban planning, intersections are designed with stop signs, traffic lights, and roundabouts to control the flow of vehicles and reduce the risk of collision. In Minecraft, intersections should be designed to avoid confusion and ensure smooth movement. Consider using wide open areas as intersections to prevent bottlenecks and think about how different roads or paths connect. For example, these T junctions and intersections should be spaced out to avoid crowding. You might want to use different materials or road markings to indicate priority paths or to guide movement. Now you may be wondering what's wrong with our T junctions here. And candidly, there's not really anything wrong per se. But let's go ahead and talk about it. What we have here is two intersections in a pretty close proximity to each other that aren't conjoined. Now, the difference, the adverse of this would be a crossroad intersection and these are quite common you have four points of road all meeting at a single point here often usually signalized by a four-way stop a two-way stop which would be stop signs on the two auxiliary streets allowing the main traffic to continue or sometimes even a traffic signal device now these two intersections obviously with this being a main line of traffic flow this will not be impeded by a stop sign or any other traffic control device However, 
these streets here and here shall be stopped by more than likely probably a stop sign and you may be wondering well what's wrong with that and quite frankly in minecraft there's nothing and in, in the real world there's not much of a problem either however this can be modified to increase productivity of traffic flow because if you have a car turning let's use pink for an example a car turning in this early direction that's a fancy arrow i promise that's an arrow and equally so, another car turning from this stop sign in this direction. Though this is two lanes of traffic, this car was looking left and right to avoid conflict with any traffic flowing in, this, in these two directions. He was not particularly looking out for somebody turning and accelerating back towards him from this intersection here. Again, it's not a huge problem, but sometimes these T-intersections, if not properly spaced, can cause some mortar congestion, and also potentially accidents. Speaking of intersections, another critical aspect of traffic flow is the use of roundabouts and loop roads. In real world cities, roundabouts help merge the traffic flow at intersections without the need for stop signs or traffic lights, reducing the delays in keeping traffic moving. In Minecraft, we can implement roundabouts at any busy intersections to keep players and entities moving smoothly. This roundabout, for example, which candidly looks like a target block. Don't look at that. I can't unsee it now. But this intersection here used to be a T intersection, like we showed an example over there earlier. Now before, two, if not all four directions of flow need to be traffic signalized with a stoplight or stop sign in order to keep traffic moving. But if you have four busy roads and you don't want any of them to stop, a roundabout is a solution for you. Roundabouts allow the approaching traffic to enter via a yield sign, still being cognizant of traffic approaching from the left, but taking the movement to the right without any sort of impedance on the traffic flow. Traffic will keep circling around and around and around, and each individual driver ought to be able to exit in all four directions without having to stop. Now you may be asking yourself, well then what is the downside to a roundabout? And Unfortunately, from an aesthetic appeal, there's not one. Because now this center island can also be used for some sort of landscaping or greenery. The one constraint of a roundabout, other than being area focused, if you don't have a large enough area, obviously this does not work, is cost. And you may be picking up on a common theme. Cost has a lot to do with everything that we do in the design field. And there you have it, by focusing on the alignment, the cross section, the pavement materials, and the traffic flow, you can create roads and pathways that are both functional and beautiful. Whether you're building a sprawling city or a quaint village, these principles will help you design roads that enhance your Minecraft world. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Minecraft Civil Engineering Series. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials and creative builds. Happy building, everyone! Goodbye.